So, um, this is taking a while to come out. Um, this is going to be the hopefully the first part in what is going to be a very long series um, where I'm going to take each individual Doctor Who DVD or box set. I'm not quite sure I'm going to tackle a box set yet, but I've got plenty of time to think about that. And I sort of talk about everything to do with it, cover art, special features, problems, you know, give the whole history, a bit like DVD history, but more in-depth and more individual. So, this is going to be a bit of a test run, also not quite what it's going to be like, because this DVD is very different to any of the others. But I think you'll get the, uh, the gist of it. Now, I, if you've been subscribed for a long time, and I mean a long time, you may recall I did do something similar to this, but I only got up to Robots, I think, Spare from Space, which was the third release. So, A, I'm going to make this better, and B, um, just what uh, watching those back, this, it would, this is definitely going to be a better one, because I have more information. But like I said... This one is a very different DVD. Um, I think there's also, I'm going to do a lot more comparisons to be like uh, the commentary on, let's say this, on um, Robots of Death. I'll com when I did Spearhead, I'll compare the commentaries. Are they better? Have they been you know, given more pointers? That kind of stuff. Uh, but this one is very bare bones. But we're going to get into it all the same. Uh, anything that you think I could improve on, you know, like the way I'm explaining stuff, you know, anything that you think doesn't need to be explained or you find uninteresting, please do say, because again, I'm not, I don't know everyone who watches these videos, so I don't quite know what you want from it. I'm going to go in as much detail as I, well, I seem fit, and yeah, we'll just go from there, and uh, ignore everything in the background, it is just, of course, with the, the new set, which is just anything random I find on the shelves. Uh, so, to begin with, we'll start with the front cover. Now, this artwork isn't made specifically for this release. If you are quite big on your VHSs, and I think some people may be, you will know that this is was first done for the VHS. Uh, the artist uh, escapes me, it may see on the back, and we will find out when we have a look at it. Uh, but it's a very nice piece of artwork. Although reused, it still works. Although I don't like the Yeti, because it, these two look very well. The Dalek wasn't silver, but we'll gloss over that. They look very nice and realistic, and he's too caricature for my liking. Um, but at least it's got proper Richard Herdnall there and whatnot, and yet it, it looks really nice. So at the bottom here we have uh, all the Doctors it was starring. Uh, it does say William Hartnell and Richard Herdnall's name, which is interesting. I guess William Hartnell is technically at the start. Uh, we have the original U logo before it all changed back in 2002. Uh, we have the Five Doctors Special Edition, very basic font. I'd, yeah, I'd say Arial, but it could be some, something similar. Massive TV movie logo here, as you can see with no shadow effect that is visible, although it does look like it may have one. And I'll go into why I've, I've mentioned something as boring as that in a moment. Yeah, the original, be well, he looks like they're kind of going back to that now, but the uh, the point, the BBC logo, quite new at that point, and the original DVD logo, which always looked like a face. Is it just me, or can anyone else see that? You know, your two eyes, your nose. I mean, it could have been designed that way, I'm not too sure. The spine is um, dreadful. It's very basic. This was the sixth ever Doctor Who DVD to be released, and more on that in a moment. But um, yeah, we have a 01006. The incidentally, 1007 is the first season of League of Gentlemen, which is an interesting one to be released after. Uh, but yes, this is one of the original re releases from the, the BBC with DVDs, because at the time, DVDs, unless you were releasing Friends, there wasn't many sales of them. Uh, DVDs were very, very a high end uh, thing at this point. And um, well, as I think probably about 2003 time they're starting to get a bit more common. Anyway, we have um, your general thing you get on the back of most DVDs. So here we have a sum up of the story, uh, but it's quite an interesting sum up actually, because it says around here that it is one of the greatest Doctor Who adventures ever, which um, is debatable, I guess. But you know, it's quite a good selling point, I think, and I think that should have been on the front cover myself. Uh, but this also talks about how it's a special edition. Um, and this is this new version of the story features extended scenes, previously unseen sequences, new visual effects, and stereo soundtrack. Not intended as a replacement for the original edition of the story, this is an alternative version which uses state of the art technology to embellish and enlarge one of the greatest Doctor Adventures ever. Which is an interesting thing to say, considering that it doesn't have the original on it. Um, but you know, I, th I like, I do like how it's not George Lucas where this is now the replacement. This isn't a replacement; it is a. Um, what, what word did they use? Uh, the alternative version, uh, which I think is a really interesting way of putting it, and it's rightfully true. I, to me, this always was the Five Doctors because this was the DVD I had when I was younger. But uh, I think to a lot of people, it, it was that thing where George Lucas did Star Wars and BBC thought, let's do it with Doctor Who. But yeah, so more make sure the special edition. We have uh, the original transmission stuff here, produced, directed, video presentation, music by Peter Howell. 
Um, then we have three production, well, photos from the photo gallery. Two very similar. And then two and then just some sad men written by Terrence State, blah, blah, blah. You know, it's a very interesting way of doing the back. They are, they are never, ever done like this again. I really wish I had on hand an original uh, BBC DVD. Uh, I had this one like the first season of Blackadder. Just so I could see how they did it on them, see if this was... They were trying to get uniformity in all their DVDs, or whether this was done specifically for the Doctor Who. I'm assuming it was done specifically for Doctor Who, but um, I could be wrong. We have uh, just all your basic legal information. Your region is 2 plus 4, 4 by 3, runtime. Uh, BBC Worldwide Limited 1999, which is a correct. However, it was only just in 1999, it was the 1st of November when this was released. And I believe that it was released along with all, other si all the other five d DVDs at the time. Uh, but yes, it's universal to perform all and whatnot, and a barcode. Do you have a close look at that barcode? There you go, yeah. I, yes, this is a, just a 15 year old boy putting a barcode at a camera, and this is no one going on the internet. My god. Well, could be worse. <laughs> and anyway, that is the front cover, and the back cover, and the spine, and um, whatnot. The case, if anyone's interested, is just a normal silver case, no real sparkle into it, um, it and it doesn't have any thumb things there, as it is a very old DVD. Uh, first of all, we're going to go through the booklet, and the, well, an interesting thing that I've, with mine, which uh, proves that it was an old, one of the first, one of the original releases. So the booklet. Like it's just the same as the cover, except for look, there's a much more of a shadow on the Doctor Who logo, which is why I mentioned it earlier. And it doesn't say special edition, which is interesting. I don't know why it doesn't. Maybe they, because they had to squash everything down because it isn't quite the size of the cover. Uh, then they had to remove special edition. On the back, we have all the chapter points. Uh, there are 24 in total. Um, and I just what what I love about the chapter points, and even on the later DVDs that they did it with, is they were all named. They weren't just chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, because it really does tell you how much love has gone into a DVD. Because if you look get a film and the chapters are just chapter one, two, three, four, just a picture, nothing's gone into it. We look at stuff like Star Wars and that. They are they are named sometimes after quotes and whatnot. This one is a little bit more sort of to the point. R Rast and Robot, Sarah Jane, Third Doctor, you know, but. Still, it's it's a nice addition, and you know it really was because these were high end things in, in back in the day. So it was you were getting your money's worth. Now this little booklet is again nothing like any before. This is all about playing a DVD and whatnot because people didn't know it. Guess in the, back in the day, and then these are little biographies about the for each Doctor. Uh, they basically say what their character was like and just a few little things about them and whatnot. And then some about Richard Hurnell here, which is nice. Also, I have no idea what these are. There's a different colours on each one, and do look slightly different. I'm guessing they're meant to be something like Seasons of it, because this one looks very bubbly. But yeah, this is a really nice booklet, by the way. I mean, just look at that page spread. There's information about the second, third, and fourth Doctor. Uh, for me, my three favourite Doctors. And, I mean, to me, I'd have that as a, as a wallpaper art on uh, my laptop. Because it is just really good. With the sad man there in the background, and Sarah J. It's, you know, really cool. Moving on to uh, the Fifth Doctor one here, again a very nice one. This is this I don't like um, the border around the photos because it's very reminiscent of this old VHSs, you know, with the bit, with all the multicolored borders. I think the photo they didn't need a border. I mean, um, I mean that one there, that one's okay with being white. I think white works as a border, but this one with no borders looks so much better than this. You know, they took uh, they took the time on some of these photos to uh, take out the background, and that is just a production photo from the Five Doctors, um, which doesn't need to be needed. Although it does have the Mantisaurus Tom Baker, which is quite funny. But anyway, here we have all the character information. So this is all about the companions that feature in the story. Um, weird our canines there, as he's not really mentioned in this. Uh, I think he is in the Sarah Jane biography, however, though. And then Turlo, and the Master gets a description, but not the Sidemen or the Daleks or the Yetis. Um, I think the Sidemen deserve a, you know, a mention in this, I'd say. And But Romana does, and she's in it for, what, all about ten seconds? It's, a, it's an odd choice there, personally. Uh, then we have all the other DVDs that were released at the same time. Uh, we have Blackadder 1, Noddy in Toyland, um, Jane Austen's Persuasion, I think that is. The Planets, um, Take a Journey to Worlds, uh, Beyond Your Imagination. And the best of Monty Python's Flame Circus, Volume 1. So, it, quite an interesting mix. The other ones I'd consider getting are those two, um, even though I have all the Monty Python's Flying Circus and all the Blackadder, just, you know, because they're old and cool. Uh, but yeah, 
those are the original DVDs, the original six as it was, and um, these were sort of done as a test to test the DVD market, and uh, here we have a questionnaire that was sent with these to see how much, you know, was it worth releasing more DVDs and how soon, and you know, how many people brought and whatnot, and we're going to go through it, because why not, because otherwise this video is going to be really short because there is not much to talk about about the DVD itself, but I think it's interesting to sort of talk about the history of it and you know how, I mean, it's very interesting how this was chosen because this isn't, of course, you know, this is a very much a feature film. So the BBC are, are really trying here to get the people's money's worth from DVDs. So they have an, an embellished soundtrack, they have new special effects. Although this had already been previously released on video, like I've said before. But, you know, really to show what the BBC were trying to do and they were trying to appeal to almost a movie market with their releases. Although how Blackadder and Jane Austen, well, maybe Jane Austen and not, you know, it's... There's a few, I guess, discrepancies, but again, Blackadder is massive. At the time, Doctor Who, in 1999, was at the point where fans didn't really want it back because they'd seen the Paul McGann film and thought, you know what, we'll keep Big Finish and whatnot. And the public had almost forgotten about it. It's a bit... It was an odd time, really, so... There you go. Anyway, BBC DVD questionnaire. It says, enter our DVD prize draw. You can win £200 worth of BBC audio, visual, or, or book products or one of ten runners up prize of a DVD of your choice from the current BBC range, simply fill out the questionnaire and return it to BBC Worldwide Marketing 80 Wood Lane, Woodlands, London, W12OTT. And here are all the questions. So we have question one, how did you become aware of this title? And I'll get it closer so you can read, I won't read all the options. With the advert one, it seems interesting, I'd love to see it if there were, if there's any really old BBC DVD adverts, I'd love to see those. Uh, how many DVDs have you purchased to date? Um, that's quite interesting. I'd assume it'd be around the 6 to 10 or the 1 to 5 mark for people buying this in, back in 1999. Um, how often do you purchase DVDs? 1 or 3 times a year? 4 or 10? 11 to 20? Um, I'd, obviously, if I did this now, it'd be the 20 plus. Uh, where did you purchase this DVD? W. H. Smith's Virgin HMV. I've never heard of MVC. Online shop. Funny how online spot with a hyphen there. And then, or the police state which. That's quite interesting. I Virgin... I, I'm assuming that would be Russell Brand's Virgin, and I don't remember them having DVD shops, but then again, I've no idea what MV, um, MVC is, and W.H. Smith doesn't really do DVDs anymore, but they do, but, you know, it's interesting that was chosen over something like, um, I guess, I guess cash converters weren't really a thing back then, and it's, uh, certainly CX wasn't either. Uh, in this DVD, uh, is this DVD, sorry, a personal gift, or... For a former, I guess that's an interesting one. You know, do people buy DVDs for other people? Bit of a pointless question, personally, because it's like they're still going to buy it no matter what. But I guess I don't know. Uh, what external extra do you look for on a DVD? This is interesting. An uncut version, previously unseen footage, director or producer's comments, making of the program footage, additional language, languages, other please state. That's quite an interesting question because extras and nowadays on DVDs just they don't appear to be there. I mean, DVDs themselves are becoming redundant with things like Netflix, which I don't really agree with myself. Um, I like owning physical stuff because I don't want... A we because people say, why do you need to get Netflix? I, I, I tell people, can I watch episode, Star Wars Episode 4 on Netflix? Oh, wait, no, you can't. You know, I want to watch um, every episode of Top Gear. Oh, no, you can't. Is every Can I watch some class Doctor Who on there? Oh, no, you can't. You know... I'd like to. I like to own my stuff, you know. And I decide when I watch it, and I decide whether I want it taken away from me. Um, but the extras themselves just aren't done anymore. I guess because people don't care about them, which is fair enough. But you know, I mean, look at even stuff like um, the Power of the Daleks. That didn't have many. You know, you look at the later releases of Doctor Who, which we'll go into. Their extras are pretty poor. Uh, look at the Blue River Spearhead. No, no original extras are on there. They just didn't have many. Um, I think the Blue River Spearhead myself should be a ten disc set. Uh, with in-depth views of the, every single frame of the story, but that's just me. <laughs> anyway, do you own a widescreen TV with surround sound? Uh, interesting one, whether to do widescreen releases, of course. Do you pr uh, possess a PC with a DVD drive or a DVD video box? Uh, please stick if you want to receive information about other BBC DVD titles. I doubt the BBC do that anymore. Name and address, all of that, and your age. Um, that's, it looks like it's 18 to 25. Nah, that's, that's odd. Why can it, can someone of 15 not buy a DVD? I don't know. And then we have a big question mark there. Lovely. Almost in the style of Sebastian McCoy's, weirdly. That's a bit of an odd one. Anyway, that's a questionnaire. Really nice. I 
I had no idea that I didn't buy this for this reason. I had this for just a long time, just randomly in there. But I think it's really interesting, you know, a uh, little, I guess, a bit of a time capture in a way of what the BBC was sort of thinking in those days about DVDs and what they wanted to know. Uh, the disc itself, we'll have a look at. Yes, we are going this in depth. Uh, we just have no mention of the story, just Doctor itself, 1999, and all the legal information. Um, I don't. It, I don't know what type of DVD, because there are types, yeah, and I don't quite know enough about the types, but I don't think it matters really. The back, it's, there you go, it's very scratched this one, it still works, uh, but it's very old. I'm a guessing, judging by the fact there's no silver cases, it's pre-2004, and judging by the questionnaire, I'm going to say 2002, 2003 maybe, uh, it could even be 1999, you never know. Um, but yeah, so... What is the, well, the DVD itself like, actually? Um, we're going to go in a bit of detail. I've got some notes here. Uh, to just help me along, just so I don't forget stuff. So, uh, the when you put the DVD on, first of all, you get a really interesting Dolby Digital intro with, like, a helicopter and really whiny music. It's a bit weird. Um, never seen on another release again. Uh, then we have the normal sort of standard intro with the uh, TARDIS and the Doctor Who logo, but the music keeps going longer than it does on subsequent releases. Uh, then we're greeted with a TARDIS console um, a, a menu. Uh, now I've done, drawn a, lift, a very accurate diagram here. So you start with the language options, English, and then you go to main menu. You can choose to either go to special features, which will take you to the music, or scene selection, which will take you there. These two are the bits of the console that aren't used. Uh, yes, I did map this out. Uh, yes, I do have too much free time. Um, so first of all, what well, the music in the st it, it's really bubbly. That was the only way I could describe it with. It was really bubbly. Um, if you know what, if you've earned this DVD, I'm sure you'll know what I mean. But um, yeah, it was it was rather odd. And the options are, of course, I've, well, I've gone through the options. Uh, the scene selection stuff works as any other scene selection. You know, you can just go through. Not like the other ones where you choose each episode. Um, although this one technically is an episode. It won't work. You just keep going across. It's, it's in groups of four. Uh, the music option is an interesting one. You have an eight-track soundtrack uh, that you can use. Uh, you can, uh, from the menu screen, you either choose, you can choose a track or hit play all. Uh, but when you hit play all, you can't then skip to a track. Um, well, you can, but it, it, it's a bit it, it's a bit annoying. But here is each track's runtime, and I was quite shocked by this because I remember listening to it once or twice, but I. Every time, I, every time, every time, every time a new track came on, I wrote down the the um, the time, and uh, it was a bit surprising. So track one is four minutes twenty nine, track two is two minutes thirty six, track three is four minutes twenty, track four is six minutes seven, track five is five minutes twenty six, track six is three minutes thirty six, track seven is four minutes thirty seven, and track eight is one minute twenty two. That's quite a long soundtrack. Um, so. You know, it, I was quite shocked by it, to be, like, to be honest. Um, it went on for quite a while. And it's some good music. Uh, with the new Five Doctor soundtrack coming on, it's quite an interesting... But there's some really good music in this story. You don't realise how good some moments are. I mean, some bits were going on. Because when I was listening to it, I was just doing stuff around the room. And sometimes they'd get my attention. i like, oh, that's actually quite a good piece of music. Um, so, yeah, so I think that Five Doctor soundtrack, it was going to be worth getting. Uh, purely, weirdly, I got that opinion from a really old DVD. Who would have thought... Uh, but yeah, the way this is displayed, you have the Doctor Who logo that you get when you intro a DVD every time, the gold one. Uh, but it's frozen, and then underneath it's just the track numbers in a um, sort of cubey, sort of computer-looking uh, style. Um, finally, the, about the DVD, if you put the subtitles on, they aren't accurate at times. Basically, it'd be something like, um, what would be a good example? Um... You know, that they replace or don't say words when they are not, not needed. It's So it's not a 100% accurate transcript of the story. Whether people cared about that, I'm not too sure. But it was just, I just put the subtitles on, I know straight away, oh, bits are wrong. I just thought I'd mention it. But anyway, uh, that is pretty much everything for this DVD. Uh, that's Yeah, I've made a 15 minute video, almost 15 video, minute video, on something that probably could have been covered in four. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, like I said, this is the first time doing this for probably about a good year and a half. So, um, anything that you think I've messed up, anything you think I can improve on, I'd love to hear of it, seriously. Um, just try and word it nicely. Um, also, when would the next one be out, I guess, is the next question. Well, when I've watched it now, 
what you got to remember is I'm going to have to watch the story at least three times. One without anything look remastering. Don't technically have to do that one, but I'd like to for myself just so I can remember that much of the story. One with production subtitles and one with the commentary. If you try and do both at the same time, you just don't get anything. You can't read all subtitles and you stop listening to the commentary. So, And then you've got all the special features and I'm going to have to look around for Easter eggs and then find information. You know, I'd like to get it out at some point this month. Um, but judging by how long this one take, I don't know. But hopefully I can get in a bit of a swing of it. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, do you want to see more? I guess is the other question as well. Because if everyone goes, now nah, this was shit, then um, fair enough. Found a new idea. Uh, but if you've been enjoying it, do say like. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, I've got you know YouTube etiquette. I've got to tell people to subscribe. But I think really that's your own choice. And I just don't have to prompt you for that. If you like a channel so much, you probably would subscribe anyway. And if you don't like me, well... I can't blame you myself. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on now because it's getting onto the 60, well, past the 16 minute mark. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm done. See you. Bye.